This is a short video of how I have my development environment set up. This is largely going to talk about the software, but I am going to touch on the hardware and the physical environment. These aren't the best tools for everybody, and this isn't going to be a recommendation that everybody should use these tools or have this setup. That really depends on the person, which is the best option, and even can depend on their application domain. Different domains might do best with different editors, different development environments than my particular domain. The goal is really to inspire you to invest in your development environment over time. What we're looking at here is my Git repository for my software config. You can see this is a rather old repo. It has a commit from eight years ago. And that seems about right. Uh, I had it in a different repo previous to this, so it's probably older than that. This has been something I've invested in over time to get the environment I have. This results in a lot of this being very specific to how I work and the mnemonics I use for things. You don't have to host it in GitHub, but I highly recommend you creating a repository of configuration for yourself. A lot of the editors and IDEs these days use nice text-based formats that diff easily, so this also assists in migrating this configuration between your laptop and desktop, for example. I do use a Kinesis Advantage 2. This is an excellent keyboard. You don't have to get a Kinesis Advantage 2. There's a lot of high quality keyboards out there. Uh, different keyboards are going to be comfortable for different people. The Kinesis Advantage does take a bit to get used to, but it is quite a nice keyboard. Other keyboards that I've used that have worked really well are things like the Microsoft ergonomic keyboard. Very high quality, good bang for the buck. For the mouse, I use a trackball most of the time. I try to avoid using the mouse. Namely, I try to keep everything a keyboard interface. The shell environment I use is oriented towards keyboard interface. The editor I use is oriented towards a keyboard interface. And even the desktop environment, I have tailored to work well for a keyboard interface. The primary way I did that is pretty tiny change of just ensuring all the windows are maximized by default. This is also what tiling window managers do, though they offer more options than just maximized by default. I prefer maximized by default because it cuts down on distractions. Regardless, a tiling window manager does save you a lot of mousing around. And they've gotten quite popular lately, so there's a lot of options there. During development of a project, I will always build an index of technical references. This is extremely valuable for you and your team. You can build this in a wiki page, you can build this in an HTML page. It doesn't really matter on that aspect, but it's worth contributing to over time. This saves you a lot of effort trying to find references that you need for your project. And in this case, we're looking at a automatically generated API index. And Firefox has a feature that is quite useful to make use of. That is pin tab. Hit pin tab. And now your reference index is this convenient fixed tab. And you can, with the middle mouse button, just start spawning background tabs of reference documentation. Very nice, very quick. I try to keep the web browser down to one or two windows. I try to have one window of just reference documentation. I have quite a few tabs, but you can move between tabs fairly easily with the keyboard. This also encourages me to either memorize or complete tasks or somehow discard tabs before there are too many tabs for one window. I will on occasion open another window for the web page that I'm working on so I can switch to that easily and see the results of any change. Likewise, I try to have only one terminal window open. And here we're looking at how the terminal window typically starts. This is just the bash shell, and we're in a directory of some project. The important part is that I start screen for a project I'm working on. And I have a particular screen configuration alias to project screen. What this does is starts up screen with my configuration that has host name, always one tab for commands, and always another tab for the editor. And if we go over to that tab, the editor's already started and available. I can disconnect from this and then reconnect to it with the same command. 
There are other tools that support similar interactions, such as Tmux. We'll take a look at that screen RC real quick. So we see how I have that set up. And that's in, again, my Git repository of configs. And you see screen RC here. Hard status line gives that nice bottom tab uh, and host name and date. And those two tabs are started automatically with these two commands. Quite nice. Highly recommend having a command that just starts up your usual environment right off the bat. For my editor, I use Emacs in Vim interface mode. It's called Evil. Or I use Vim directly. If I'm uh, doing simpler editing and I don't need a IDE functionalities, then I just use Vim directly. That said, both of them are in VI mode, essentially. So the interface between the two is the same. It's just the level of functionality that changes. In this case, we're looking at Emacs. And again, I have my Emacs RC and Emacs.d directory stored in my Git repository of configs. There is a distribution of Emacs called Spacemax that does a lot of this for you. Uh, I highly recommend starting there if you want to try out Emacs with a VI interface. That is the basics of almost everything about my development environment. If you're interested in how I have a particular tool configured, feel free to send me a message and I'll get back to you on that. There's one other thing I wanted to touch about development environments that isn't covered by this software configuration, and that's your desk. You should really make sure that your desk is ergonomically set up for you. Make sure your monitor is at the right height, your chair is at the right height. Make sure that your keyboard is at the right orientation. This prevents repetitive stress injuries, which can be quite dangerous in the long-term career of a software developer. There's also the position of your desk, where your desk is situated, and what is around your desk. While it's popular to have open offices these days, there's very little research that demonstrates the value of an open office. In fact, there's quite a lot of research that demonstrates how open offices are pretty bad. Try to have a work environment that has some quiet areas and that's uh, about everything. Uh, if there's, again, a particular question, so let me know. Otherwise, have a good day.